We're gonna use two different tests uh, for the quality of landing. The first one is a tuck jump assessment. That tuck jump assessment is going to be looking at several factors, and I wanna go through each of those factors here. So the first one is lower extremity valgus at landing. We're gonna determine on a subjective evaluation, is there no valgus, a slight valgus, or a really obvious valgus, and that would be that you know both knees touch or one knee really crosses uh, even the midline. The other criteria is that when they're in the middle of their jump, when they're reaching, trying to get their thighs up, do their thighs reach parallel? Or you know, do they not quite get there? And that tells us, do they have the ability to get into the motion that they need? Are they looking symmetrical side to side, or is one side going up higher than the other? That is the next criteria. And then are, is the foot placement not shoulder width apart? We're gonna start them shoulder width apart, but uh, if it changes throughout the jumping or both feet uh, get, come together and they're trying to gain stability by having their feet and knees together with this jump. Then we're gonna look at foot placement from the side view on a front to back position. Does their, are, their foot, are their feet equal or is one foot in front of the other? And then by how much? If it's over half the distance, then they score that as a, a two. That's the lowest score there. Foot contact timing, is it equal? This is gonna sound or look like a galloping sound when they land, uh, that, that it's not quite the same time. And that's telling us this neuromuscular perspective, this neuromuscular skill of jumping is not where it needs to be. Remember, we've already tested whether they have a good squat at this point in time and can control the motion, have all the motion, and can control the motion symmetrically. So we know that we're actually dealing with a skill problem, a neuromuscular control problem, or maybe even a fear problem, not a, a problem that is actually a mobility problem in their lower extremities. Then the other criteria are excessive contact noise. This should be, you know, if we think about the injury prevention cues that we use, this should be like land like a feather, re recoil like a spring, spring, land like a feather. We should have nice, soft landings. Keep telling them to make it softer and softer until they can no longer uh, do that. You shouldn't really hear the landing hardly at all. If there's a pause between the jump, that is telling us too that, that they are not using the neuromuscular system, the reactive neuromuscular system, to be able to do the plyometric. They're trying to gain some stability before they go and do the next jump. Now, when they first do it, this is what we'll expect. We'll expect them to have most, if not all, of these different airs. The last two are the technique declining prior to 10 seconds. When we see that, that person you know, will start you know, not going as high, they'll get more valgus collapse as they fatigue. Then we'll also look over that 10 second period, are they staying in the same footprint or are they moving around forward and backwards? Because again, that gives us an accuracy of this skill.